Developing right now, President Trump is now denying a blistering report in the Atlantic magazine that says the president called dead American soldiers, quote, losers and suckers during a visit to France in 2018. I'm willing to swear on anything that I never said that about our fallen heroes. There is nobody that respects them more. So I just think it's a horrible, horrible thing. We made a great evening into, frankly, a very sad evening when I see a statement like that. No animal, nobody, what animal would say such a thing? We should note that CNN itself has not independently confirmed this report. We are joined now by the reporter behind it, Jeffrey Goldberg. He's the editor-in-chief of The Atlantic, and he broke the story. Uh, Jeffrey, the president has also tweeted this morning that he never called John McCain a loser. Uh, that another part of your story, we know that's not true, and we, we played his comments calling McC McCain exactly that uh, in 2015. But, but let me ask you your response to his denial of the story regarding the visit to the Bello Wood battle scene outside of Paris in 2018. How do you answer those denials? Uh, I stand by my reporting. Uh, I have multiple sources telling me this is what happened. And uh, so I stand by it. Let me read some of that reporting um, that you are putting out in the Atlantic. Um, you know, there were so many questions, Jeffrey, as you'll remember, when that trip to the cemetery at Bella Wood was canceled. And so back here, everyone was struggling to figure out what happened. Was it weather related? Was Did he just want to come home? So your reporting says, in a conversation with senior staff members on the morning of the scheduled visit, Trump said, why should I go to that cemetery? It's filled with losers. In a separate conversation on the same trip, yeah. Trump referred to the more than 1,800 Marines who lost their lives at Bella Wood as suckers for getting killed. Trump, on that same trip, asked aides, who were the good guys in this war? He also said he didn't understand why the Uni United States would intervene on the side of the Allies. And, and Jeffrey, I mean, obviously, that's, you know, pretty jaw-dropping stuff. But I do want to challenge your version of events or your reporting's version of events, because John Bolton, in his tell-all book, which was no love letter to President Trump, had a very different version. So let me just read to you how he, who was there, um, said that day unfolded. He said, the weather was bad. Marine One's crew was saying that bad visibility could make it imprudent to chopper to the cemetery. The ceiling was not too low for Marines to fly in combat, but flying POTUS was obviously something very different. If a motorcade were necessary, it would take between 90 and 120 minutes each way along roads that were not exactly freeways, posing an unacceptable risk that we could not get the president out of France quickly enough in the case of emergency. What's your response? My response is, I'm sure all of those things are true. I've heard from people in the Pentagon who, Marines, who are a bit insulted that the, the idea that the Marines couldn't fly a helicopter in the rain. But the, the larger point is, is that Donald Trump expressed directly to senior aides uh, his lack of desire to go to the cemetery uh, and not to risk 90 minutes in traffic uh, uh, it, because he doesn't understand why one would go pay that level of respect to fallen American soldiers. He also, by the way, expressed directly fear that the rain, which was quite heavy at times, would mess with his hair. Uh, Jeffrey, listen, I've reported stories that I know to be true based on firsthand knowledge, and they've been denied by the White House. So, so uh, you know, they've often denied stories that have yes, turned out have. to be true. We're, we're aware point, of that, yes. yes. Point, point of order. Uh, but let me ask you this, because these are remarkable accounts here of a commander-in-chief stating the most disrespectful things you can imagine uh, about fallen service members, uh, amputees. The president, uh, you know, mm -hmm. your story did not want amputees in a military parade because people don't want to see them. Um, I'm curious why these people uh, didn't want to go on the record. We're two months from an election, and, and these are horrible insults to service members. D did, did they explain their thinking as to, as to why they wouldn't put their names to these accounts? Well, like you know, like you, when you're faced with the same situation, you always ask for people to go on the record, sure. and then ultimately you have to make a when they don't want to go. And we've both experienced uh, why people don't want to go. They don't want to be inundated with uh, angry tweets and 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 and, mm -hmm. and all the rest. Uh, and we push hard, and um, that's why you have to sort of 
do this reporting with even uh, more belt and suspenders approach. Uh, yeah. you know, dotted I's and cross T's and find multiple sources for it. But ultimately, and you know, each each time this is a judgment call, right? Uh, you know, does the does the public's interest in, in, in needing this information outweigh the um, the ambiguities or the difficulties of anonymous sourcing? And in this case, I decided that I felt I knew this information well enough from high enough sources and multiple sources that I thought we should put it out. I do hope, obviously, and I try as you do, um, to get uh, various people to say things on, on the record. And uh, I, I hope that there's an effort to, uh, you know, there's. The, I hope there's an effort by, on the part of reporters, and I'll be continuing to make that effort to, to move this uh, material directly onto the record. Hmm. Um, the White House is responding really strongly. I mean, more strongly, their, their yeah. refusal, rebuttal, rejection, I guess, of this reporting is stronger than other negative stories that we remember in recent days, weeks. Here's what they say. Uh, right. This report is patently false. President Trump holds the military in the highest regard. He's demonstrated his commitment to them at every turn, delivering on his promise to give our troops a much needed pay raise, increasing military spending, signing critical veterans reforms, and supporting military spouses. This has no basis in fact and is offensive left-wing fiction. Um, for what right. that's worth, uh, I, I would I would I would point out that I would point out that the Washington Post, in following my story, um, not only confirmed details of the story, but added a new detail that I did not know, which is that Donald Trump has openly asked the question, uh, why should the U.S. military go search for soldiers who are captured uh, or are missing? Uh, and the theory, as he expressed it, according to the Washington Post, is that they have failed at their jobs, so why do we make that kind of effort? And so what you see in all of these comments, going all the way back to 2015, mm -hmm. uh, when he disparaged John McCain for getting captured, uh, what you yeah. see is a, a lack of understanding about why soldiers serve and, and what constitutes heroism. That's the, that's the part that's very interesting to me, and that's sort of the, the through line from those McCain comments right up to today. Jeffrey very, very quickly, I should note that Go the ahead. former DHS chief of, chief of Staff under Trump, who resigned recently, he tweeted out confirming a, a detail in your story, and that is the president did not want flags lowered to half staff uh, after John McCain's staff. He says, I, kn I would know because your staff, that is the president's staff, called and told me. Just notable, that's a public comment this morning in support of your reporting. Jeffrey Goldberg. Jeffrey Goldberg, we have to go. Thank you very much. Everybody can read the article themselves. Thanks. It's the newest piece in The Atlantic, Trump. Americans who died in war are losers and suckers. Thank you very much for being on.